Greetings! I am Pastor Kirsten Moore and I am coming to you once again from Calvary Lutheran Church here in Rio Linda, California. Welcome to worship! We are so very glad to have you with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, let us begin worship with confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Well, this is now the fifth Sunday in Lent, and we jump forward to right after the Palm Sunday procession. Some Gentiles ask to see Jesus, and we hear Jesus share who he is and what he is about. Today, as with any other Sunday morning we might gather in worship, we will still worship and pray and sing and hear the word and share the peace and encounter Christ. Jesus promises to be with us in the sacrament of Holy Communion, so please be prepared with some bread or crackers and some wine or grape juice or whatever you have around. There are also some pretty important announcements after Communion, so stay tuned. Let us now gather in prayer. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue with Leon leading us in singing, Open Our Eyes, Lord and let us during this worship service open our eyes and our hearts and our minds and our ears to what you might speak to us. Amen.
Hi, my name is Matt. The first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. Behold, the days are coming, says Yahweh, when I was established a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judea. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them up out of the land of Egypt, a covenant they broke. Though I was their spouse, says Yahweh, but this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my law in their minds and on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they need to teach one another or remind one another to listen to Yahweh. All of them, high and low alike, will listen to me, says Yahweh. For I will forgive their misdeeds and I will remember their sins no more. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 5 through 10. Even Christ didn't presume to take on the office of high priest. Christ was appointed high priest by the one who said, You are my own. Today I have begotten you, and in another place you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in flesh, Jesus offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to God, who was able to save him from death, and Jesus was heard because of his reverence. Firstborn though he was, Jesus learned to obey though suffering. By having been made perfect, Jesus became, for all who obey, the source of eternal salvation. And he was designated by God to be the high priest accordingly to the order of Melchizedek. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Among those who had come up to worship at the Passover festival were some Greeks. They approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and put forth this request. Please, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and together the two went to tell Jesus. Jesus replied, Now the hour has come for the chosen one to be glorified. The truth of the matter is, unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. If you love your life, you'll lose it. If you hate your life in this world, you'll keep it for eternal life. Anyone who wants to work for me must follow in my footsteps. And wherever I am, my worker will be there too. Anyone who works for me will be honored by Abba God. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Abba, save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Abba, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowds that stood nearby heard this and said it was a clap of thunder. Others said it was an angel speaking. Jesus answered, it was not for my sake that this voice came, but for yours. 
Sentence is now being passed on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. And when I am lifted up from this earth, I will draw all people to myself. By these words, Jesus indicated the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of our Lord. Every now and then, it is fun to watch those makeover shows where they take a person and a few days later, they and their home are transformed to a version of themselves they couldn't even imagine and could barely recognize. Well, due to COVID, there haven't been so many lately with safety precautions, but I can still have fun catching up with older make better episodes of Queer Eye on Netflix. They call them make betters because you're still you, just better and more fully you. If you haven't watched Queer Eye, I highly recommend it. You never know where Lutheran pastors might pop up. Well, actually you do. Season five, episode one. One of the things I like about that show in particular is that it doesn't just make over a person's appearance. The men on that show use their gifts to enhance every aspect of a person's life, their home, their business, their relationships, their relationships with friends, family, and food, and their view of themselves. Most times, one tunes in, the person who is inevitably surprised has something they want to hang on to. Sometimes it is a woman who is quite proud of her hair that she has grown down to her waist. Other times, it might be a man who is convinced he is more attractive with an extremely unkempt beard. It isn't unusual for there to be a person who doesn't want to part with a holy shirt they've had for decades, or a collection of trinkets that just causes clutter and collects dust, or an old chair that in reality is a health hazard, maybe stinks. Well, toward the end of the show, when grudges have been forgiven, relationships reconciled, Homes, businesses, and even churches refreshed. Culinary techniques and nutrition practiced. Hair has been cut. Style enhanced. And their friends and loved ones can hardly recognize them. There are almost always tears of joy. And 99% of the time, those tears include mine. It's a beautiful transformation, but probably not ever what any one of them expected. When the center of the make better woke up that morning, they surely were not anticipating what they ended up with a couple days later. I'm sure those who put forth their name couldn't have predicted it either. It couldn't happen unless they were willing to allow it. When they asked to see the Fab Five, they had to be willing to let go of their hair, their beard, their grudges, their self-doubt, their holy shirts and beat up chairs. They're normal so that they could move forward. Well, in John's Gospel today, I'm wondering if the Greeks had any idea what they were asking for when they requested to see Jesus. Those Greeks were not necessarily traveling from Greece, maybe, but Greek was also a term for Gentiles or non-Jews. Up until then, they really didn't have much business with Jesus. The Jewish people had been waiting centuries for a Messiah to come and be their king, to free them from oppression. 
and that really wasn't much concern to those who weren't Jewish. It seemed that this Jesus guy had come for the Jewish people, not for them. But it was the Passover week, and they were there. And earlier that day, there had been a big parade of sorts with people laying down palm branches and even their cloaks or coats as someone named Jesus rode past on a donkey. These Greeks wanted in on action. Now, we don't really know what they really wanted. Did they want to see a miracle? A trick? A magic show? Did they want to see what this celebrity of sorts looked like? Had they actually heard Jesus speak and they were moved? Maybe they wanted to follow Jesus and be his disciples too. So they went to the person, the most like them, who they could most identify with, Philip probably because he had a Greek name. And Philip went to Andrew, whose name also could be Greek, because Philip didn't know what to do. These people, who really didn't belong, wanted to see Jesus. So then these former fishermen, who some may argue don't really belong following a rabbi, went to Jesus and told him, Jesus never really answers. And we never learn if these Greeks got to meet Jesus face to face. But it seems to be a trigger for Jesus. Upon Jesus hearing that these Greeks want to see him, he immediately knows that it is now the moment. For some time now, Jesus had been telling his disciples that his moment or his time for glory had not yet come, but now it has at last. But it isn't going to look like what others might expect. If these Greeks were coming to see a Jesus rise up in military power or take command like an earthly king, well, they were not going to see that. Jesus knew that his time was coming to rise up on the cross. He tells us that if we want to follow, we need to be willing to let go. Let go of those things that keep us from being who we are called to be. Let go of our love for the things of this world. Let go of life as we know it. Let go of our fear and inward thinking. Jesus calls us to stop doing the same things the same ways over and over again. To remember that in our baptisms we too have been named as beloved children of God. We too have been called and gathered, enlightened and made holy. And like Jesus, our call isn't to one of just being successful with money and worldly power. Our call is to serve others. It is to love one another. From the cross, Jesus calls all people to himself even the Greeks, even us, a continent away, no exceptions. Jesus calls upon us to change, to allow ourselves to be made better, not just much needed haircuts, but to let go of whatever might separate us from him. Let go of our biases, our prejudices, are insisting on how things are supposed to be and how people are supposed to behave and come with him. See him. 
Don't just look for the Jesus we want to see, the celebrity who agrees with us and gives us glory, but see Jesus for who he is. See Jesus as the one who is willing to give everything to show us God's love. It is when we let go and are willing to change, willing to allow Jesus to transform us, to make us better, so that all people can know Jesus' love, that we will be able to truly see Jesus in his glory. We will have eyes that see with amazing grace, unconditional love that accepts each and every one of us as an essential sibling. And it will be fabulous. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I will be leading us in the prayers for today. On this fifth Sunday in Lent, let us offer both our laments and our petitions to God, responding to each petition with words from today's psalm. Have mercy on us. O oh God, we lament that over the past months, many Christians have not been able to assemble in person for worship. Many believers have languished alone. And we pray, strengthen all Christians in every church around the globe in the covenant of their baptism. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation, and service projects, whether online or in person. O oh, faithful God, in your steadfast love, have mercy on us. We lament that by indulging our own desires, we have missed your creation and have worsened the poverty of others. And we pray, continue your care for the earth you have made, protect animals and their habitats, grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds, and shelter all lands from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. O oh, Almighty God, in your steadfast love, have mercy on us. We lament that as a nation, we have not ensured justice for all and equal access to freedoms and to the necessities of life. We lament ongoing prejudices and violence on our streets and in our homes. And we pray, bring an end to warfare and terrorism, imbue our courts with truth and wisdom, Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. O oh, righteous God, in your steadfast love, have mercy on us. We lament the sufferings of people the world over. We lament the sorrows of the pandemic. We lament hunger, homelessness, and loneliness, and we pray in this pandemic, provide vaccinations to all persons around the earth. Guide us in healing the sick, welcoming the migrant, feeding the hungry, and living with others in harmony. Today, we especially pray for Charlotte, Jessica, Eloise, for Joyce, Johnny, Sue, Jimmy, Dale, Jacob, Emma, Ron, Donna, and Jasmine. We also lift up to you the loved ones and community of those who were murdered in Georgia this past week. Please bring them all peace and justice. We now lift up to you those we name before you now. O benevolent God, in your steadfast love, have mercy on us. We lament the hopelessness that afflicts so many people. We lament the anguish of refugee camps of overcrowded hospitals, of unhappy homes, and we pray. As this Thursday we celebrate the Annunciation of the birth of Jesus to Mary, instill in us gratitude for your presence among humankind, for holding us through sorrow, and for leading us into joy. O 
O compassionate God, and your steadfast love, have mercy on us. We lament our secret sorrows known only to you, and we ask you to receive the prayers of our hearts. O mothering God, in your steadfast love, have mercy on us. We lament the countless who have died of COVID and the diminishment of life that so many have endured. We praise you for those who have given us words for our lament and our praise, every, especially today, Thomas Cramer. At the end, bring with us all who have died in Christ into your everlasting presence. O everlasting God, in your steadfast love, have mercy on us. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, Father of glory, and your bountiful spirit, and then in the name of Christ, our great high priest, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. 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 worshipped with us before. This is the time when Christ gathers us together for the sacraments of Holy Communion. He promises to be with us in this moment. This is sort of like the Lutheran version of an altar call. If you want to really feel yourself in Christ's presence, I invite you to please join us. Now, in order to keep everyone safe, we're just not ready quite yet to gather as many bodies in one space, but we are always one body in Christ. And so we give thanks for this gift of technology that has been keeping us together throughout this year as we gather with our bread and crackers and wine and grape juice and remember how our Creator's love transcends time and space and absolutely nothing can separate us from God's love, not even COVID-19. So in a moment, I will say the words of institution, after which we will pray together the Lord's Prayer. After that, we will distribute the sacrament, which will happen in this way. For those of you who are living alone, you'll take a bite of bread and a sip of wine while I say the words of promise given and shed for you. For those of you who are sheltering with others, you will commune one another, breaking off bread and giving it to each other while saying the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. You can dip your bread, you can drink from your cup, whatever you prefer. And hopefully you don't have noisy motorcycles near you. <laughs> In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Gathered together in one spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. Before we go, there's a few things. I promised you a few things. There's a few things. As always, I want to thank all of you who helped to make today happen. All are essential in the body of Christ. Now, if you feel God stretching you and calling you, I encourage you to reach out. Please call me up and set up a time to talk or send me an email. We'll also be holding Zoom Bible study this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. If you need the Zoom link, please let me know. We'd love to have you all join us. And new faces are especially encouraged. Thank you to those of you who have been sending videos, sharing the piece so faithfully this past year. It's so good to see you, and it has really helped keep me going this year. It, you have no idea the difference it makes. Didn't have that many this week, but please keep sending them just a little bit longer. Yes, exciting. As approved, I announced this last week, as approved by our church council, we will begin worshiping in person, outside, Easter Sunday. Woohoo! Now, we still need to social distance and wear masks, but we can be in the same space. And we will be recording the worship services and posting them so that those of you who aren't able to join us in person can still be worshiping with us. So next Sunday is the very last Sunday I'll be asking for peace videos. So please, everyone, every single one of you who is watching this, send me a peace sharing video. Do it right now. Get it done and send it to me. Let's have the most videos ever. Everybody share the peace. And since it's Palm Sunday, if you're able to take a palm branch off, wave it around. If you can't find a palm branch, you can wave a coat around. If you can't find a coat, you can wave your palms around. I know, it's silly, but you know, we get to come back together Easter. Okay, seriously, we know you might be tuning in from all over. And if you have your own congregation, we encourage you to continue to give to your home congregation. But if Calvary is your church home, or if you don't have one, we would love your financial support with either online giving or mailing us a check. Both our mailing address and our website address are at the end of this worship service. And thank you to all of you who have been so faithfully contributing during this time. It, it has been very appreciated and very much needed, so thank you all. And if you don't have a church home, we would love for you to make Calvary your church home. If you're interested in baptism or membership, please contact me. And if you're local, come to our worship service in person on Easter. We'd love to see you. Lastly, as disciples, as apostles, as those who are learning and those who are sent out, share the good news. Share the service on your social media and in your emails. Tell people where to find it on your website. Invite people to come worship with us on Easter Sunday. It's an easy thing to do. Just like the Greeks asked um, Philip, you can be someone's Philip. You can be someone's Andrew. Help someone to see Jesus and invite them to worship. 
Okay, now receive the benediction. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. Go in peace, share the good news, be safe. Thanks be to God. We'll see you next week. Miss you.